So as Annie said, I'm a PhD student in Matteo Carandini and Kenneth Harris's lab. And I'm going to pre present a really basic and quick overview of recording hardware and finally talk about how to align the data that you've recorded. Yes. Um, right, so as um, Matteo said earlier, NeuroPixel's goal was to leverage the current state-of-the-art um, silicon fabrication technology for EFIS recordings in order to pack more sites in one single probes. And what this leads to is that there's high density of sites. So you have a large number of sites and they can span very large areas of the brain. So 2.8 uh, millimeters for 2.0 probes and 3.8 millimeters for 3.0 um, probes, which means you can record regions that are very far apart and you can record um, large regions. And additionally, one neuron is gonna be recorded by multiple sites, which means you get a high yield and you can easily correct for motion artifacts. Um, any motion of the brain relative to the probe is gonna be visible as spikes simply shifting up or down from one site to the next. And these can, uh, at least theoretically, be automatically corrected with techniques similar to image registration methods. Um, additionally, so all of the sites in the neuropixels are high density, low impedance sites. And yes, this is a schematic. Um, all the data is amplified, filtered, and digitized on the base. So you have a 10-bit digitizer for the 1.0 probes and a 14-bit digitizer for the 2.0s. And this means that you have minimal noise and a really good uh, quality signal. Additionally, you have a pretty small footprint, so it's easy to insert several probes together. I think the current record is still uh, eight probes that Nick Steinmetz um, managed to record simultaneously in a behaving mouse. And you can even chronically implant up to three probes in mice because they have a small footprint and are quite lightweight. So this was a quick overview of the defining characteristics of neuropixel probes. Now we're going to look um, at what a typical hardware setup might look like. Um, yes. So typically you would have some manipulator uh, on which a probe would be affixed which was connected to a head stage. For 1.0 probes, um, you need one head stage per probe. And for 2.0, you can record up to two probes with the same head stage. And this probe is then mounted onto some sort of rod. Some probes come already with dovetails pre-mounted on the probe base, which makes it um, easy to mount these probes on a rod. Uh, and others come without that, and you have to manually um, do this. Data is then transferred via um, an IMAC cable in most cases to a PXIE chassis where you can record um, up to eight probes. So you can have up to two of these IMAC cards that each have four slots, which means you can have up to eight probes for 1.0 probes and up to 16 for 2.0, again, because you can put two probes per head stage. And this data is then transferred to uh, an acquisition computer via an MXI Express cable. Um, we're just going to go briefly over what this looks like when you're recording. So your PXIE chassis has different status lights. And it will typically have a green status light if your acquisition system is on and ready. Um, if you're currently acquiring data, it'll be purple. And if there's some sort of error and perhaps there's a software firmware error, it will be red or might even be blinking red um, and green. So it's important to take a look at these lights when you're trying to record in order to diagnose and check what's going on. Um, okay, and finally, to how do you sync your data? So you have two options. You can confer the configure, sorry, the IMIC cards we saw to, sorry, something happened with my slide, um, to output a sync signal. And these sync pulses though, um, can only be generated at certain regular intervals. So the sync pulse will look something like this in this corner, this should be over here, um, which can sometimes make synchronization tricky, especially if you're starting cards and different acquisition at different times. 
Um, an easier way is to use a separate device like an Arduino to generate a sync signal. That's then um, you can send this as an input to the iMIC card. You can see this wire here going from the Arduino into the um, iMIC card in the PXIE chassis. And the best practice for this is to generate a, a signal at pseudo random intervals that can be either an off or on state, um, which makes it much easier to synchronize data together. Um, there's more resources at these two links with how the with the specific Arduino code that can be used to generate um, these pseudo random um, zero to five volt signals. Um, and some more data here explaining how specifically you can uh, use different synchronization strategies. Uh, and finally, I wanted to finish with just detailing an important signal particularity of NeuroPixel's probes, which is that um, the probes digitize um, voltages on all of their channels during sample periods, but the analog to digital converters um, are, well, they're expensive in power and in real estate. And so there's only a couple, a few dozen on each probe. And typically channels are digitized um, together. Are there multiplex into groups? And then this group is digitized together at one specific time point, which can mean there's slight offsets between the channels. Now these offsets are very small, but they do matter in the cases where you want to perform, for instance, common average referencing in order to get rid of certain artifacts. So here, this is an image I've taken um, from Bill Karsh's website, uh, Spike GLX. And this image is centered um, around an epoch where you can see a noise artifact that's present on all channels. And this noise artifact, as you can see, should be present on all channels and um, at the same time on all channels. So this first image, um, spans 100 milliseconds. If you then zoom in at 100 milliseconds, you can see that different channels have slightly different offset. Um, and there are different tools such as CatGT written by um, Bill Karsh. And um, this is also, this method is already implemented in certain versions of KiloSort, such as the Python port of KiloSort, PyKiloSort. Um, where an operation is done to align your data. And you would want to do this before spike sorting or doing any other processing on your data. You would want to first align um, all your channels together. Um, yes, and just to finish, so you can find much more details, of course, in IMAX NeuroPixels manual, which you should all have. And if you need any help and troubleshooting, the NeuroPixel Slack is very active and you should find links for this um, easily. <laughs>